The British Columbia province of Canada is a region well known for its exploits and awe-inspiring hydropower facilities and production. But amidst the rich history of power production stands a mega project of such magnitude that it has been dubbed the largest major hydropower project in the region since 1984. Named the Site C Hydropower Project, it stands as the latest response from the province to the global push for renewable energy. This project is the newest addition to the already impressive history of hydropower generation in the BC area. Despite its potential benefits, Site C is shrouded in controversies, leaving many to ponder. What is the core of this bold hydropower venture? And what changes will it bring to the region's power setup? Moreover, why does a station focused on renewable energy stir up so much debate? The Site C Dam is a major hydroelectric dam currently under construction by BC Hydro on the Peace River, 14 kilometers southwest of Fort St. John in northeastern British Columbia, Canada. The mega project is located approximately 80 kilometers downstream from the WAC Bennett Dam and upon completion in 2025 will become the fourth largest producer of hydroelectricity in British Columbia. It is expected to have a capacity of 1100 megawatts and an expected annual output of 4600 gigawatt hertz of electricity. With this amount of power, the project is expected to supply constant power to about 450,000 British Columbian households per year, ensuring a safe, reusable, and most importantly, affordable source of power for the residents of the province. Upon completion, the project would utilize storage water from the Williston Reservoir of the existing WAC Bennett Dam. And as such, the Site C project would not require the construction of a water storage system, but would rather create an 83-kilometer-long reservoir with a total surface area of 9,330 hectares, including a highly controversial flooding of approximately 5,550 hectares of land. The Site C Clean Energy Hydroelectric Power Plant will be equipped with six 183-megawatt vertical axis Francis turbines for energy creation, with a water diversion system for the project comprising two 10 and 80 meter diameter tunnels, 700 meters and 800 meters in length, respectively. The powerhouse will receive water flow through six pen stalks, each 80 meters long and 10 meters wide, and the water discharged from the generating station and spillways will be conveyed into the river through a tail race system. The Site C Clean Energy Project would include a 60 meter high and 1,050 meter long earth filled dam with a crest width of 10 meters. The dam spillway would comprise seven gates, and the project would also include the construction of two coffer dams on the north and south banks of the river. It would all be set on an 800 meter long and 70 meter high roller compacted concrete, or RCC buttress for short, to provide the foundation for the powerhouse and spillways. According to the analysis, approximately 35,000 jobs are expected to be created during the development and construction period, along with a further 10,000 direct construction positions. This, coupled with the estimation of a 100-year continuous power supply and the estimation of the dam, to add about $160 million to the local GDP and about $3.2 billion to the provincial GDP. The Site C project stands as a marvel in engineering and a gem for the region. However, although a huge step up in the region's power supply facilities, the project has been faced with several controversies that threaten to shut its construction down. See, first conceptualized in the 1970s, the project was faced with an onslaught of problems and queries, as many expressed concerns about its environmental impact. 
In fact, the concerns were so strong that between 1981 and 1983, the British Columbia Utilities Commission turned down the Site C project, stating that it did not take energy prices into account, nor did it rely on statistically significant past patterns of behavior. However, in 2010, the project was exempted by the passage of the Clean Energy Act, and in 2014, it was approved by federal and provincial governments after a three-year environmental review with construction starting in 2015, with an estimated price of about $16 billion as of February 2021. The project was subject to further controversies as many questioned its planned flooding of agricultural land, damage to the local environment, high construction costs, possible alternatives, and the uncertainty of future electricity prices and demand in the province. Following this, Treaty 8 First Nations and local landowners made legal challenges to the dam. These claims were later dismissed by the Federal Court of Appeals, allowing construction of the dam to continue. It then faced opposition from over 200 scholars, as well as the Royal Society of Canada in May 2016. They voiced their concerns to the federal liberal government, pointing out weaknesses in the regulatory review process and the environmental assessment for the project. Although the claims of the masses were strong, on December 11, 2017, the government announced its decision to complete the construction of Site C, explaining that doing otherwise would put British Columbians on the hook for an immediate, unavoidable, and devastating $4 billion debt with nothing to show for it. They stated that it would result in rate hikes or reduced funds for schools, hospitals, and important infrastructure. In an address to the public, they said, We've come to the conclusion that although Site C is not the project we would have preferred or would have started, it must be completed. So now, with the government's determination behind it, the project is expected to begin power supply in 2024, with completion estimated to be around 2025. The project is expected to help prevent approximately 30 to 70 million metric tons of carbon dioxide from being generated in the atmosphere and, as such, is now seen as a major step in the fight against pollution, climate change, and global warming. There have also been discussions with Ottawa, Canada, to move Site C power between BC and Alberta, with Justin Trudeau, the Prime Minister of Canada, saying, I think anything we can work together interprovincially or nationally to get emissions down, emphasizing hydroelectricity, creating opportunities to get off coal, and getting off natural gas where possible is good for the country. It's good for our emissions profile, it's good for the economy we need to build. Although the project has the support of the government and a good number of the public, it is still not out of murky waters yet. As of 2023, the main contractor in charge of constructing the hydroelectric dam project was given a $1.1 million fine for dumping contaminated drainage water into the Peace River. This pollution was discovered by federal agency enforcement officers who claimed that in 2018, the contractor discharged 3,300 cubic meters of drainage water with a high concentration of metals into the Peace River due to their water treatment system's inadequate capacity. The Peace River Hydro Partners pleaded guilty in court for their actions, which stood as a direct violation of the Federal Fisheries Act, according to Environment and Climate Change Canada. Besides the controversies, the project also faces opposition from problems like logistics and freezing weather, with many believing the most concerning is BC Hydro's lack of transmission capacity to move the generated energy to where it would be needed. This is because there is now a surge in demand from industry for large amounts of power as they try to decarbonize their industries and focus on renewable energy. And with Site C coming online in the near future, many speculate that although the energy generated in theory would be able to drive the industries forward, it would require a revamping of BC Hydro's energy transmission networks, as they currently have enough transmission capacity to serve the existing and committed load on the north coast, but do not have room to spare for the additional load of Site C.
The Site C Dam itself is about 90% complete, and the project overall is more than 70% complete. With this project's nearing completion, the region can be assured of a power supply that is capable of effectively handling the demands of the current population and that of the estimated population for years to come. Although the controversies may remain, it has become the popular opinion of many that the pros outweigh the cons of the project as many await its completion. But what do you think? Is this project an environmental disaster, or is BC Hydro about to complete a major milestone in its quest for renewable and clean electric power supply? Let us know in the comments section below. Thank you for watching, and please like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more updates on the best mega projects the world has to offer.